So items to take into consideration, if this is something that you want to look at, uh, certainly there's different approaches, but the question you should be asking, what should you be monitoring? Certainly not something that you should be doing in isolation, so it shouldn't be relied on the systems programmer or the security expert to, to decide what events is important to them. You would want to gather your team around uh, all the different disciplines, and you probably heard of the term separation of duties. I've also heard of it called the segregation of duties. But sit down as a team and decide what events are important to you. I had one customer that had a... Um, this was a checkbox item for him. They had an audit there. They were lacking in this particular area. He chose to implement our solution and he turned on all of the events uh, and sent all of them to his enterprise sim. So maybe, you know, maybe probably not the best way to do things, but uh, it was something that he needed to do. He had some other priorities, so he turned on the events and I'm guessing some filtering will take place later on the line, down the line. We do have a very good baseline. Uh, that we ship the product with something that uh, you you can consider using. It's not a one-size-fits-all, but certainly uh, I think it is a really good starting point. So from the get-go, you have some events that's going to be reported to your SIM. You can certainly build on this or take off as you deem fit, uh, but um, it's a good baseline. And in fact, we have some records that I'll share with you uh, from a SMF80 type point of view. So this is this is events that uh, or information that we've learned from from our customers what they thought was really important to monitor from an SMF AT point of view. Careful, some of those records can be pretty overwhelming. Uh, one that you need to uh, look out for is going to be the SMF 92s. Uh, they can be pretty. Um, there's a lot of information, so perhaps if you do want to enable some of those 92 records, only enable a a subtype of them. And then just to share uh, some information with you, uh, this is something that we can pass on to you, disseminate to the audience today. But if you want to get some more information, and this is, like I said to you, what we've learned from our customers, they thought that all the ones highlighted in red were really important, and that should be monitored on the product, whereas the ones highlighted in yellow were um, not as important, and they thought that these are the ones that they should be turned on and monitor from a RACF point of view. And as you can see, there's a bunch of these RACF commands, some really powerful ones, uh, but we can certainly share this information with you. So some items to take into consideration if you do going down this path and you wanna bridge this gap, this security gap, you know, what SMF records are important to you. We monitor a whole slew of SMF records, but you will have to determine which are the ones that you wanna turn on. What files are important to you? Is this one dot palm lab one of them? I know that would be one that would be a good candidate for you to monitor. So VSA will be able to monitor all the updates, any activity that occurred on the sys one dot palm lab uh, PDS. There might be some other important ones that you want to include, and I'll show you that in my live demo how you can add these uh, PDSs or the data sets to uh, the VSA configuration ISPF panel and you then can monitor some of this um, very important uh, data sets. How about those really important TSO user IDs? The bank I used to work at I had a methodology when I used to go in on a change control or a maintenance slot, and you want to re-implement your changes. Our, you know, our TSO user IDs that we used did not have the relevant access, so we would have to implement some change control procedure to get these really powerful TSO user IDs that will allow us to implement our changes. But those TSO user IDs were pretty powerful. You had access to almost every, you know, everything on the mainframe or on that LPAR. Um, that would probably have been a really good candidate to monitor and see exactly what changes were made uh, during that particular time when these changes were implemented in our maintenance slot. Do you want to be made aware of when TSO user IDs are logging outside of your normal hours? Perhaps a user ID or TSO user ID logging at 2 o'clock in the morning is not normal operation for you, and you want to be made aware of that, so that's certainly something that the SIM can escalate for you. Or how about some of those important right-to-operator console messages? The ICH-408i message springs to mind. That's one that um, would tell you when a rack air violation occurs. Perhaps you want to monitor some uh, SMF, the SMF 119 records, perhaps uh, when a file gets stored or get the file is uh, retrieved from the mainframe, those 
do kick out right to operate the console messages you can put this in the product so that you have uh, some idea but then again the smf 19 record might uh, 119 might just be the one that you're interested in the apf changes i know this is something that auditors want to keep tabs of uh, in fact since zos 2.1 uh, smf 90 a new smf 90 record has been added so you can keep tabs on when APF changes were made, whether there were additions or files that were removed from the APF list. RACF commands, pretty straightforward. The setter ops command, you'll see that in my live demo. Uh, some of the commands I just shared with you on the spreadsheet, those would be the ones that you want to add to um, the monitoring to make sure that you've got a full scope or you've got full visibility as to what the security administrators are performing on a day-to-day -day basis. How about the start of tasks when they end and uh, and fired up? So you can get uh, information up on those, and I'll illustrate that in our live demo. The FTP transfers, which I mentioned, the SMF 119s. Um, perhaps you want to go back, you know, a year or two to figure out what a file was, you know, stored on the mainframe. You can go back and see the user ID, the date and time, what files were retrieved from the mainframe. So that could be something that you want to take into consideration if you're going down this path and want to add this information into the configuration of the product and sending off to your enterprise sim. USS activity, uh, there's a lot of products these days that exploit USS. Uh, there's a few powerful commands. I've used a few of them. Uh, the change ownership command and the change mod command are two that spring to mind. Perhaps you want to monitor those. Uh, certainly turn on those so you can get visibility but remember, this is the one that I would advise uh, using. Don't just uh, open up the floodgates because it can be pretty chatty. And this is the SMF92. It generates a lot of records and a lot of activity. DB2 activity, so we can provide activity on that. If you're a DB2 shop and you want to know, uh, you know what people are doing, the SMF100 and 102 records and the IFC IDs or the IFSIDs, as sometimes people refer to it, we can provide you some good information on that. So the product does support DB2. That is an additional component on the product. And then syslog D activity. Do you want to know what is occurring from a syslog D point of view? So all, all things, items to take into consideration. And uh, certainly you have to work with your team to figure out what is the best way, what's the, the right information that you want to monitor and make sure that you, you know, you're covering the full spectrum because the last thing you want to do is uh, leave out something. And, uh, you know, that turns out to be where where you, you're lacking and you need to go back and find out this information at a later stage.